Thank you for joining us for getting to know about our heavenly family as we learn about this life of St. Anthony of Padua. Our apologies for recording later in the day. We had technical difficulties. The gospel call to leave everything and follow Christ was the rule of St. Anthony of Padua's life. Over and over again, God called him to something new in his plan. And every time Anthony responded with renewed zeal and self-sacrificing to serve his Lord Jesus more completely. His journey as a servant of God began as a very young man when he decided to join the Augustinians in Lisbon, Portugal, giving up a future of wealth and power to be a servant of God. Later, when the bodies of the first Franciscan martyrs went through the Portuguese city where he was stationed, he was again filled with an intense longing to be one of the closest to Jesus himself, those who died for the good news. So Anthony entered the Franciscan order and set out to preach to the Moors, but an illness prevented him from achieving that goal. He went to Italy and was stationed in a small hermitage where he spent most of his time praying, reading the Holy Scriptures and doing menial tasks. The call of God came again in an ordination where no one was prepared to speak. The humble and obedient Anthony hesitantly accepted the task. The years of searching for Jesus in prayer, of reading sacred scripture, and of serving him in poverty, chastity, and obedience had prepared Anthony to allow the Spirit to use his talents. Anthony's sermon was astounding to those who expected an unprepared speech and knew not the Spirit's power to give people words. Recognized as a great man of prayer and a great scripture and theology scholar, Anthony became the first friar to teach theology to the other friars. Soon he was called from that post to preach to the Albigensians in France, using his profound knowledge of scripture and theology to convert and reassure those who had been misled by their denial of Christ's divinity and of the sacraments. After he led the friars in northern Italy for three years, he made his headquarters in the city of Padua. He resumed his preaching and began writing sermon notes to help other preachers. In the spring of 1231, Anthony withdrew to a friary at Campo Sampiarno, where he had a sort of treehouse built as a hermitage. There he prayed and prepared for death. On June 13 of that year, he became very ill and asked to be taken back to Padua where he died after receiving the last sacraments. Anthony was canonized less than a year later and named the doctor of the church in 1946. Anthony should be the patron of those who find their lives completely uprooted and set in a new and unexpected direction. Like all saints, he is the perfect example of tuning one's life completely, turning one's life over completely to Christ. God did not do anything with Anthony that was not pleasing. And what God pleased was a life of spiritual power and brilliance that still attracts admiration to this day. He whom popular devotion has nominated as founder of the lost objects found himself by losing himself completely and totally to the providence of God. St. Anthony of Padua is the patron saint of lost items, poor, and travelers. And his feast day is June 13th. Let us pray. Behold the cross of the Lord, be gone, you evil powers. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Anthony, vanquisher of demons, pray for us, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your people, through the intercession of your servant, blessed Anthony of Padua, the grace to prevail over the powers of darkness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, St. Anthony. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us.